everyone. This is Michelle and I'm Cassandra McLaughlin. Why did I All sing right. that? I, love I don't know why you were singing that, but okay. <laughs> so we are um, talking today about Deacon Brown's daughter and about all the different things that um, some of the behind the scenes things that happened. So just wanted to kind of share. They were funny. A lot of funny, funny things that happened. We, we put together a big old long list of stuff we wanted to talk through a little bit. So any, any opening words for you, Kathy? I just want to say thank you to all of the people who have watched the movie and who have been giving us feedback on social media. However, we appreciate it, but can you please leave a review on Amazon? Because reviews yeah. matter. Amen. And I want to say before we get going as well, um, that there might be, I don't know, there might be spoilers in this talk. Will there be spoilers? No. Okay, no, we're not going to do spoilers. No spoilers. Hopefully you've already seen the movie, but if you have not, go ahead and go to Amazon, look for Deacon Brown's Daughters, and it is available if you have Prime. It'll be free for you. We prefer that you buy it, actually. Who wouldn't want somebody to buy it, right? Like, buy the movie. Buy the movie. Right. You can't go to the movies anyway right now. Right. So buy the movies well. watch it over and over and over again. Right. right. All right. So yeah. let's start with, this was one of the first <laughs> things that I heard from somebody. Um, Stanley, behind the scenes, talking about Stanley and the glasses. Stanley, okay. uh, and I do this a lot too, but take off his glasses and say different things and do little different things. And put yes. So here's the truth behind Sandy and the glasses. The first day we started shooting, Jay, who is our who was our cinematographer, was like, he needs to look older. He needs some glasses. So we were like, right. I mean, I wear glasses. Let me turn my neck. My necklace is all crooked. It messes mess me up. This is what I should have been thinking about Sandy. But anyway, uh, Jay was like, he needs some glasses. He should look older. So we were like. Okay, I'll go get some glasses. I'll win the bathroom, got glasses. Now, my glasses are strong. <laughs> so Stanley put them on. He was like, Bro, I'm almost blind. <laughs> <laughs> so Stanley pretty much shot the whole movie not being able to see. Right. So, <laughs> so that's why he was, I think that's part of why he was taking them on and off. Because, yeah. Exactly. He could not see. And then here's the thing about it. Once you put on a certain pair of glasses and it's that pair of glasses, that's the pair of glasses you have to put on throughout the whole movie. So yeah, right. we started with those glasses and we had to shoot the whole thing with those glasses. Otherwise that was going to mess up right. some shots. Like, he made it work though. He made it work. He did. He really did. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of Sam, but I do think that's part yes. of what his, his thing. Um, and I'll share also <laughs> yes. that we had the chitlin scene uh, where Miss Bernice. Was oh my Chitlin. goodness! Uh, <laughs> I have to confess, I actually have not ever had. Well, I will say I had a Chitlin. No, no, ma'am. No, no, no. I, I, had one no, no, no. I have not had a Chitlin. That's not true. I have not had a Chitlin at all. Well, I have had a. Grit. So you've never had a Chitlin at all, at all. No, no. Chitlins. No. <clears throat> so I wouldn't even know if Chit. It, you know what would go on chitlins? I definitely not cheese for sure. Cheese goes more on. like hot sauce. That's the only thing I would put on a chitlin is hot sauce. Okay, well, lots of hot sauce. I have not had chitlins and I have not had grits either. I I had a grit. Michelle, you can't have one grit. Yes, you can. You can have a grit. One Just, grit. You can have a grain of rice. You can have a mustard seed. Oh, no, ma'am. That's <laughs> fake. I have witnesses that I had a grit in Houston. With I, the I can't go with you on the grit. I, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So, okay. <laughs> talk about that oxygen tank and your aunties. Oh, okay. For the oxygen tank, this is so funny. Michelle kept saying, if Grandma Effie is this sick, she need a mask or some oxygen or something. And so, Michelle had to actually make that mask. It did not come from the no, store. I mean, no, we team. ordered the mask. But well, your no, baby, we ordered the mask. That's right. Your daughter made something that. Chloe, she, she did the. It was a Coke bottle, remember? Yeah, the And she wrapped tank. it 
and the tube was coming from the Coke bottle. Yes. But we didn't show it. Right. Yeah, that came right. from a two liter Coke bottle, but we never showed that that little tank. We only showed the mask. And for the, the Porner sisters, oh my goodness, it was so funny. I told my aunts, I need you guys to come and be a part of the party seat. Just come, mix and mingle. Well, because they are always fab, they overdressed. So when they came, I said, why y'all look like the Pointer Sisters? <laughs> and so I thought immediately, this is so funny. We're going to use it in the movie. So I went and told Duchess, who plays the role as Brandy. I said, call them the Pointer Sisters. We're going to add that to the movie. And so I think it worked very well. People thought it was funny. I still think it's funny. But that's how they dress in real life. If they go in somewhere, that's what you're going to get. Them. I feel them. <laughs> Now, speaking of people that were dressed a certain way, New Orleans. In the barbershop. Ah! Oh my! Let me tell y'all. We wait a minute. I, let me get the whole story because I don't even know if I know the whole story. Booker had he told people. Booker is the guy who owns the barbershop for real, for real in real life. Right. It's Sandra's cousin, right? Right. How had right. he told people? Had he told everybody that they were going to be doing a that we were doing a move? How how did he know? How did New Orleans even know? He told he told New Orleans that we were going to be filming the barbershop scene. And for him to, if he wanted to be an extra in the scene to come, well, he wasn't extra and he showed up extra. <laughs> he did. And we did not know he was coming in like that. Right. His real name is Alton Hicks, by the way. Okay. Well, that's when, his real name. Now, when he well, came <laughs> in to the barbershop, we were already filming, I think. And yes, we were like right. on a break, like between shots. He walked in, everybody just fell out like who is this guy why is this what? right my husband's <laughs> like why are you dressing like he going to the prom <laughs> <laughs> but we were like we have got to include him some kind of way because yeah. he went all out so we hurried up and had him sign a release and he was all up in there yeah that was funny so, oh my god that was funny i wish we could have recorded when he actually walked in but of course it was all impromptu by the time we figured out what to do with him the sun had right. gone down and it was that too day. late and so it right. was just too late to film him walking in because so little things like that you know happen when you're shooting and you're like i you know we're thinking about that all right so kathy knows what happened when somebody had a biological malfunction oh my god i <laughs> i was not actually i don't think i was attentive when it actually happened but kathy Sitting at the table when it happened. Okay, right. so <laughs> okay, so keep in mind it was already raining that day, right? So this mm -hmm. is the scene when the children are at um, at their house, which of course was actually my dad's house. We were filming that day, and so every little noise you could hear it, and it was raining. So we were working against that already. So somebody pass gas somebody who shall remain nameless <laughs> somebody passed gas and they were jay was trying to keep the film rolling because the scene actually was going well but i could not hold it and i just yeah. died laughing. laughing so then we have to cut because she's laughing because somebody passed gas but then it gets worse <laughs> i said okay who passed gas and nobody wanted to own it? But I knew it, it came from this person because the person was right by me. And then I think I told them that they passed gas. Right. And Jay. And Jay it had the receipts. R Michelle, Jay had the receipts. He went back and played it. Oh my God. Played the receipt. So whenever you're on <laughs> set, you can't lie because. It's being recorded. <laughs> it is being recorded. Yes, but needless to say, he was he was kind of shame about it, the guy who did it. And yeah. um <laughs> I was just like, dude, we got a bathroom if you need to use the <laughs> That was a mess. But you know what? When you're around people eight, Ooh. 10, 12 hours a day. Yes. 14 hours a day, you know, things are going to happen. Um, you just don't need to be lied about it because it's on tape. <laughs> right. So, I think he actually tried to hold it in, but it escaped. <laughs> TMI. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. So my father played Arthur. Who oh my goodness. The gambling, he had the little gambling uh football pop. <laughs> and my father's name is Michael. And of course, Stanley's name is Stanley, but my father's playing the part of somebody named Arthur. Right. So my father goes up, he's supposed to go up to Stanley and say, Stanley, Stanley, like that. He goes right. up, Arthur, Arthur, cut. <laughs> you are Arthur. Wait a minute, Michelle, <laughs> wait. How many times did we have to redo the scene? I'm going to, I probably left at around the eighth take. I don't really know how long it kept going. Because <laughs> it was hilarious. I was trying to figure out, why is it so hard for him to know <laughs> that his name is Arthur? And that's Stanley. You're know. supposed to be saying Stanley. Oh, my goodness. That was hilarious. Now, mm -hmm. speaking of lines, the guys in the barbershop. And they're yes. like. Yes. Booker had his lines on the, on the uh, stand behind him. So yes, when he, he turned around, he could look at it. My brother, the guy who's in the barbershop that said, you got a daddy-daughter thing, been there, done that, still doing that. He was reading that off of his cell phone. He his was. reason for not knowing his lines is because he thought we were going to have rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am. You He's show up on set with your lines. And here's the thing about shooting in a barbershop. There's a lot of mirrors in a barbershop. Yes. Yes. And so in terms of camera angles and not getting this guy in the back of the camera, I mean, all of that becomes a part of what makes that particular scene so difficult to take. And like I said, we right. were there all day. Like the sun was up when we got there. The sun was down when we left. And so right. getting those angles and not you know, not making it look like several hours have passed between a conversation that's two minutes, you know, all of that made it a little right. bit more tactically um, challenging, but I thank God we made it through, I think. All right. So, um, speak. Had, Go ahead. I was going to say, we also had people coming in and out of the barbershop because the barbershop wasn't closed. Remember right. we had, and, and speaking of that, dropping their kids off, mm -hmm. their cut stuff. Like that. Yes. Yeah, so we had to like, not get, children in it because we didn't have permission to, you know, take them right. and stuff like that. Um, but speaking of that, when we were at the catfish scene, going back to the catfish scene, they were also <laughs> open. Yes. And, so, and it was a cold day, I think. And it was. like we're taping inside and people are like wanting to come inside the restaurant. So like when we're actually like rolling the tape, like I'm standing outside in some parts because I need to tell people, can you just, hold on, what's, what's your order going to be? Just get your mind together for your order. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go inside, you can have it ready. <laughs> and then, like, there, all the people who were there, thankfully it wasn't, like, a super crowded day. They were, we kind of pushed them right. off to the side. And they were just watching. They were really sweet. They were nice, and they were not. Yeah, sweet. they were just excited to see a movie being filmed at, yeah. at Snap is Catfish. All right. Yes. Snap, snap is Catfish and Snap is Catfish. Custom. Yes, I need some of them hush puppies right now. Right, they absolutely helped. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of food, I was dieting while we the whole time that we were um, shooting the the whole right. thing. So every other day, I was doing alternate day fast. Every other day, I was eating. So I mean, I was not eating, and every other day, I was eating. So we would shoot. When did we sh we shot pretty much every Saturday and Sunday. Right. So that meant one day on set, even though I was in charge helping with you know the food and the drinks and all of that. I was not to be eating those things. So that made it a little bit tough for me. But um, Speaking of food, we ate good. Let me just say, we right? at first didn't know what we were going to be feeding our cast. So I thought, okay, let's do like turkey and Hawaiian rolls and chips and punch and cheese, of course. And then one day, I believe uh, Michelle brought in bagels. Mm -hmm. So we ate really good. They love those Hawaiian sliders and right. those chips. So, yeah, so, Hawaiian roll sliders. If you're at home yeah. right now trying to figure out how you're going to feed your people and what, you, just get some slide. They ate that stuff over and over. I think we brought something else one time. They were like, you don't need to do this. Yeah. Just the yeah. <laughs> we're like, okay. Because right. I think want. one time we had pizza. Remember? We had pizza. It was like pizza or chicken <laughs> tenders or something. Yeah. And they were like, don't do that. Just, just. And the other thing, too, is you don't want to bring in messy stuff. 
because something could fall on somebody's shirt and now we got to go get a Tide pin and wait for that to dry so we can continue with the scene because now you, you're going to have a spot on your shirt. So I right. will tell you my big faux pas in the movie was I fired somebody. First of all, they even hired him. In the oh first. my goodness. Because Cassie did not want to hire that person <laughs> from the very beginning. I but did I not. Like, Wait a minute. Let me say why, though, Michelle. All right. I did not want to hire him because I knew he was going to be a diva. When he came in for the, uh, the uh, audition, I said he's going to be extra and he's going to get on my nerves and I'm going to want to fire him. I knew it right off the bat. But you, my dear, Casey, yes, he's so nice. He's so nice. Casey, we're going to work with him. Okay, fine. i let you win. Yeah. <laughs> and then, let me say this to artists and I have learned this from doing stuff online like freelancing sometimes sometimes artists we're not the most stable in terms of like getting stuff done you know but anyway so I fired right. a man um about right halfway through uh, we was pretty early still I won't say halfway through but but his most of his scenes had already been shot <laughs> so then right. we had to like reshoot the scene <laughs> Because exactly. we didn't want this girl, it, it was a mess. So lesson learned that, you know, if, if you have somebody who has more expertise in this, and in this case, Cassie certainly does, because I've never directed a play or anything like that, um, to roll with that person's intuition, because, you know, they, they have had more experience in this area than I did. So that worked out. It, it worked out in the end, and that's how we ended up actually with that scene that the hilarious deacon's prayer yes. scene it was worth it to read yeah. all of that it was absolutely let me just say charles derrick webb i have to say his whole name i've been knowing him forever he got the role um learned the script in three days because i was like can you do this part for me i feel like you can do this you got three days until we shoot it he came in and killed it he did. So he did. So go. Charles. It was it was what it needed to be. Amen. So yes. good stuff. Um, I had a couple other things. Let's see. Oh, now I was not there the day Stanley and the bishop. The bishop oh my goodness! Okay. <laughs> I didn't see. I was there, but I didn't know what y'all were cracking up about. Okay, so Stanley in the scene where he is with Valerie, and when uh she says you must be on the other team and he said you got to know i'm 100 man so he starts messing with his pants like let me finish show you you know like and then so he took it to a whole nother level because the camera had stopped rolling keeps my girl you don't know what i'm dealing with you y'all know what i'm working with and so <laughs> bishop is right behind him <laughs> and bishop is like a real bishop in real life Real Bishop and Bishop say, like, "What is going on?" And Stanley about die. He was so embarrassed, and Jay, you know Jay is goofy, so Jay laughed so hard he had to put the camera down. He was like, "Dude, we should." I don't know why we didn't keep some of this funny behind the scenes stuff for people to see, but that you couldn't have bought him for a quarter. He was so embarrassed. Yeah, and Bishop said, like, yes. "What?" What you say? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that was so oh, hilarious. And see, that's the thing about yes. Stanley. Stanley is a funny person in real life. And so right. just imagine, right. you, you know, all the little, uh, the bloopers and the back scenes that they show at the end of like Martin, when they'll show how him and, and Gina were doing something. Yeah. All the time. That's how it was on set a lot of times. Like people just doing crazy. Like they, we, we stopped and they're just going and like turned it into a whole improv comedian show. It was a lot of fun. Um, right. I think one of my favorite things that Jay did exactly. as a cinematographer was in the opening, well, I shouldn't say the opening, but in the, um, in the trailer, one of the very first things you see is Stanley praying. And it looks like he's praying in the evening at night. And it was like yes. bright and sunny day that day. And there were bright and sunny windows in that church. And we ended up like, I don't right. know what we, we ended up putting like some type of a film on the windows, but it, he really made it look like night. I didn't know you right. could do that on a film. So hats off to Jay, our cinematographer for that. 
that was yes, awesome. he did an excellent job with that because that was the one thing that I remember we were really worried about that. Like, how right. is this gonna really look like he was at night praying? Yes, so he yeah, it worked night. out. Real. He yes. really did a great job on that. And then yes. um, there was also um, so this is the faux pas that happened in the movie, <laughs> and this is all totally my fault. The very first scene okay. where Stanley and his mom are talking to Emily. By the way, this is Emily. Cassie, you are Emily. Yay, I'm Emily. The voice oh my Emily. God, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you got this whole line like totally in your brain, right? Right, um, exactly. Right, so I was supposed to bring an old phone or at least a handheld, like a landline phone. Right. I remember I was that. Look, and I had gone someplace and I knew they had, they actually had this old phone that was like dial, like rotary phone, like from old school at this place. So I figured yeah. whenever the time came for us. talking about school. putting it on the kitchen wall, remember? Right. We were going to put it on the kitchen wall and we were going to have Stanley kind of get caught. You know how your mom would be on the phone and you'd get caught in the cord and like all that kind of stuff. So yeah. to kind of add that, that um, physical comedy element to the piece. But Michelle Simpson <laughs> did not bring the phone. Well, what, let me say, the phone was not there when I went back. And then I didn't even have like a backup plan for a phone. So we ended up using a regular cell phone. And yeah, right. that whole thing with the black screen, that's all my fault. So, if you know, you live and you yeah. learn. And you figure out, okay, just because something's at the thrift store or the secondhand store today does not mean it's going to be there. Tomorrow. Exactly. But right. it turned out right. Also, another thing I want to mention about that scene with you and Grandma Effie and the girls, mm -hmm. all of that was a change to our script because parts of that was, yeah, remember Kim and uh, Yolanda, they were supposed mm -hmm. to have that conversation at a hospital, remember? Oh, that's right. At that's the right. Hospital. We couldn't have, and then it was going to be, they were going to be outside, but it rained that day. So mm -hmm. I told Jay, I said, you know what? We're going to move everything to the dining area. We're going to shoot that whole scene in there and we're going to make it work. And Grandma Effie is going to sit at the table. And instead of Miss Bernice being in the yard, because you were supposed to be mm -hmm. saying stuff from the yard, she's going to come through the door and visit. And they're just going to be having their conversation. So just rerouting that scene, I thought it went very well since it was not planned and we right. actually came up with that that day because it was raining right right i do remember i was supposed to be outside in the grass now yes. i'm glad i didn't have to do that because i don't do outside the well we learned our lesson with outside when we shot the car scene because your neighbor was cutting grass vacuuming remember you had right. to ask them to Long stop. leaves all kinds right. of stuff <laughs> so we learned our lesson the weekend before when we did that car scene with Yolanda and the children, mm -hmm. just all of them, the background noises that you can't control. And that right. was like, okay, we're driving by, by, you know, it's a neighborhood. Yeah. So, exactly. and, and speaking of lessons learned and sounds, we learned that it's probably not a good idea to shoot with a leather couch. Oh, yes. Because yes. leather couches make all kind of noises that sound like yes. biological noises. And here's the crazy thing. I don't know why. Like, I have had my kitchen table since 2011. Why do I still have uh -huh. the plastic on my feet? I don't so, know. But actually, that table was given to me. And the person who gave it to me passed away. And and I I guess I just was like, well, they had it on here. So I guess I'll just keep it on here too. But yeah, you don't need to be shooting on that, on that chair. <laughs> if you got plastic on your couch. Uh, any of your chairs, they are not suitable for filming. Oh my goodness. Do I think we still have plastic on couch and chairs? In the country, absolutely. Okay, I didn't know we were still doing that. Well, it has kept the, the chair from getting dirty, but it yeah, ain't making film. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, that was fun. I, we just wanted to give you guys a little bit of um, laughter, especially today, and um, to let you know yeah. kind of how it went behind the scenes. If you're thinking about making a film, I just say, you know, do your research as much as you possibly can, but there's just always going to be stuff that you won't know. Right. Don't let that keep you from getting started. You don't have to do a whole feature length film for your first film like we did. We just we just jumped in. That's just how we roll. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> we 
we didn't even like, we, we were like, I'm in water. Come on, let's do it. Right. We were just like, hey, let's just make it happen. And we do thank the people who invested in us in so many different ways. Some people gave yeah. their time. Some people gave money. Some people gave their talent. I mean, we just appreciate even and the actors who came. Yeah, their homes and their businesses. Um, they just opened up their doors and were just so gracious to us. And so thank you for that. We really absolutely appreciate it. And we hope that the message, the message yes. of restoration, the message of Christ's faithfulness to his people, the message of forgiveness, um, that, that forgiveness. they will help That's people it. receive it and give yeah. it in the same way that Christ gave it to us. Right. And then we have to keep... The like Michelle said, forgiveness, number one, but also in forgiving, just know that, you know, although you may feel like, well, I'm forgiving them, but what about the apology I never got? Don't worry about it. Just forgive them anyway. Love them as Christ loved us and just keep loving because it's really for you. You will free yourself of so much if you just learn to forgive. You never know how much strength you have until you have to forgive someone who, number one, isn't really sorry, because that's hard. Mm -hmm. I've had to do that. But forgive, let it go, and watch yourself grow spiritually as you do so, because as long as you hold on to that stuff, you're not going to grow because you're going to be bitter. You're going to be bitter, but we don't want you to be bitter. We want you to be better, better in Christ so that you can do all of the things that he has called you to do in this life and right. for all of the people who keep asking about a sequel the answer yes. is no we're not doing sequel. <laughs> there is no part two it i feel like we had up it. everything what yeah i mean i think you know we tied up everything in part yeah. one the conflicts are resolved. and i just think yeah i think deacon brown's daughters is done is a done deal it ended beautifully uh the message is what we wanted it to be. I don't think we need to take it any further. But here's what I will say. We will be doing more films soon, but it won't be that way. I got to eat my Wheaties first. Yes, Michelle has to eat her Wheaties. <laughs> because she, Michelle, Michelle doesn't want to be on the set every day. Not but every day. Every film Not day. Every single Every time day. we film... Michelle's going to be right by my side because if I have to be there every day, she has to be there. I might be asked to just get what a it phone is. or something. I might have to go get a phone. <laughs> You're not going to need a phone. <laughs> All right, everybody. It was great. God bless you. Uh, share the news of the film. Share the news of uh, and spread the love. Spread the love of God everywhere that you are. If you might not be able to change the past, but you can change. That's right. God bless you. Love it you. God bless you. Love you guys. Thank you. Deacon Brown's Daughters, the movie on Amazon. Go watch it over and over and over again. Up to 10 times. <laughs> we can still get credit. <laughs> right, right. Oh or better right. yet, buy it. And then you can watch it over and yes. over and over. Yes. Share with your family and your friends after you buy it. All right. Don't Love let you guys. it log to your account. Bye-bye. <laughs>